Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So today's video, I'm going to cover creatine, but not for its muscle building performance because there are literally thousands of videos on YouTube all about that. This video is going to be covering the benefits of taking creatine and brain and cognitive function. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Firstly, creatine may help with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is characterized by reduced levels of dopamine, a key neurotransmitter in our brains. The large reduction in dopamine levels causes brain cell death and several serious symptoms, including tremors, loss of muscle function, and also speech impairments. Creatine has been linked to beneficial effects in mice with Parkinson's, preventing 90% of the typical drop in dopamine levels. However, there is no evidence as of yet that it will have the same effect in humans. In an attempt to treat the loss of muscle function and also strength, those with Parkinson's often weight train. In one study in individuals with the disease, combining creatine with weight training improved strength and daily function to a greater extent than those who just trained without creatine. However, a more recent analysis of five control studies in people with Parkinson's noted that taking between 4 and 10 grams of creatine per day did not significantly improve their ability to perform daily activities. Creatine may also be able to fight other neurological diseases. A key factor in several neurological diseases is the reduction of phosphocreatine in the brain. Since creatine can increase these levels, it may help to reduce or even slow the disease progression. In mice with Huntington's disease, creatine restored the brain's phosphocreatine stores to 72% of pre-disease levels, compared with only 26% for the control group. The restoration of phosphocreatine helped maintain daily function and also reduced cell death. Research in animals also suggests that taking creatine supplements may treat other diseases too, including Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, and brain or spinal cord injuries. Creatine has also shown benefits against ALS, a disease that affects motor neurons that are essential for our movement. It improved motor function, reduced muscle loss, and extended survival rates by 17%. Although more studies are needed in humans, some researchers believe that creatine supplements can serve as a defense against neurological diseases when used alongside conventional medicines. Creatine can also improve overall brain function. Creatine plays an important role in brain health and also brain function. Research has demonstrated that your brain requires a significant amount of ATP when performing difficult tasks. Supplements can increase phosphocreatine stores in the brain that help it produce more ATP. Creatine may also aid brain function by increasing dopamine levels and also mitochondrial function. As meat is the best dietary source of creatine, vegans and vegetarians often have very low levels. One study on creatine supplements in vegetarians found a 20 to 50% improvement in some memory and also intelligence test scores. For older individuals, supplementing with creatine for two weeks significantly improved memory and recallability. In older adults, creatine may boost brain function, protect against neurological diseases, and reduce age-related loss of muscle and also strength. And if you're looking for a reputable supplier to buy these supplements from, of the big three, Renew Bioscience, Do Not Age, and Pro Health Longevity, Pro Health and Do Not Age carry creatine. And if you do choose to buy from one of these suppliers, please feel free to use the code MYNMN at checkout to get between 10 and 15% off. So I do take creatine to build and maintain lean muscle mass. I take between 5 and 10 grams per day. I do 30 days on, and then I do 60 days off. Now, if you're thinking about taking creatine for its neurological benefits, and you're a bit worried because most of the studies I spoke about were in mice or in animals, then remember what Andrew Huberman said about being in the control group. Just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there are like, if there isn't a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, you know, random, random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try? Right? Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. 